Good evening. My name is Richard Curtis, and this is my presentation for my set drafting and scale model uh, for the set design of the adding machine. Um, I'll start out. I chose to use the main stage after all. Um, my stationary set that stays in place the whole time. I uh, lined up dead center and brought it almost out to the side of the proscenium. I have two platforms that are four foot wide by eight foot long. Um, both of these. The top platform is eight by sixteen. Uh, the separation in the back is the piece for the Sisyphus uh, part. The dotted lines denote the tunnel that I go through. Now I did note that it stops because I do want it back. I don't want it to be completely see-through. Um, moving on from there, I'm trying to figure out a better way to overlap this. So if I use my computer as a light box, I can walk through scene by scene. So I started out with scene one. which gives the stage right platform uh, the bed, which is about three feet by six foot. And on the other platform, you have the armoire or dresser, um, whichever you, know, you, <laughs> you want to call it. Uh, that way I figured it'd give more acting space. Um, well, he's in the bed and she's on the other side talking back and forth. And she could, you know, walk down the back of the stairs, which are not really meant to be visible by the audience. If they are, it's, it's, it's not a big deal. Um, give her some place to play around between the actual set pieces. That's scene one. Scene two is the workspace. And I lined it up where Mr. Zero's desk, obviously the larger desk is more important, is up on the upper platform which I'll show in the scale model is eight foot tall so the platform is um, he has the larger desk and I have his chair set to the side well hers is down lower and it's a smaller desk and her chair is offset that way they can do cross communication back and forth if needed scene three um, in the house I'll show more and explain more on the scale model I didn't want to use um, set pieces for it. I know it said chairs and everything, but uh, I had a different vision for it. Um, well, I guess I can explain it now too. For me, um, if Mr. Zero and his wife use the space, um, like if he's running around with a plate and she's chasing after him trying to clean up, the actors have more space to play in and give more action for the stage. Um, they could back and forth on different platforms while she followed him trying to get his plate, get it cleaned up. The main part was when the company comes, instead of having chairs lined up on either side, the way that I saw it in my mind would be Mr. Zero standing downstage and coming in line with the platforms would be everyone else lined up. To me, it creates more tension um, because I know for most people, psychologically speaking, if people are just standing there watching you, you start to feel like tense. You start to feel, I guess you could say, forms of anxiety, um, which it, it builds tension for the scene, as, is how I envision it, which would be perfect for the scene when the police arrive. Um, if they would, sorry, my computer's trying to go down. Say the police were in the back of the tunnel and all the lights are off and it's dark. So then, while he's walking forward and everyone's lined up watching him, then the police exit through through the tunnel and apprehend him. And that's how I envisioned scene three. Uh, the next one is the court scene, which I have lined up on the platforms. So the jurors, once again, using the idea that standing creates more tension the jurors would be standing, um, and this would be like the jurors box that comes around and encompasses them. While Mr. Zero is on the other side in a smaller juror box, so he's being judged. Uh, scene five with the graveyard. I have one 12 foot wide 
uh, set piece to come in that has, which I'll show more in the scale model, that has the um, tombstones on. So they have all the downstage acting place to carry out. Plus it would be interesting, which getting into lighting, if have a fog machine coming through the tunnel and some backlights and give her a really dramatic effect. Getting into scene six, uh, the Elysium Fields is just dead center, just a simple, simple tree, um, which I'll also show in the uh, scale model. Um, the way going into lighting as well that I envisioned it would, like the, the scream of the psych in the back and have like the psych lights hitting it to give color. Um, and then some colored backlights coming through the tunnel. That way, carrying with the idea that color denotes happiness and joy, as it should be used sparsely. Which will also I'll describe more in the scale model. And then finally, um, scene seven, and uh, I guess you call it the afterlife, is just back to his desk, um, sitting dead center on the top of the platform. Uh, solo and solitaire and then after the scene uh, when the two gentlemen are out talking to him you need know, to come down down the stairs come around the scene and obviously exit through the tunnel and that is what I have for my draftings now my front sketch in black and white I'm gonna pull back so you can see everything I angled it a little bit to give you a better feel but I chose the graveyard scene um, the tunnel is, everything is blacks and grays. I used darker black to show the objects that were further back. Um, used the image of Sisyphus rolling the, the boulder up the hill. And the way that I decided to design the boulder, um, with lighter grays and darker grays, or a feel of um, black and white. Because um, the more I think about it, the more it, it feels like it should be almost chalkboard um because to me it's it's like telling a story and chalkboard to me it, it, there's also a lesson behind a story there's a moral behind every story but it's that feeling like like he's lived out his life his past lives everything work related slavery um and the adding machine added in as an old tool of how they used to make the marks on the chalkboard um, every time they counted everything and I wanted to give that feeling like it's a story being told plus it's a, it's an interesting way to defend the idea of not using color and plus I can get away with using whites or light grays preferably whites um, because like in the scene here also once with lighting um, if I shoot down a light across this I can illuminate the boulder and the boulder automatically, boom, turns into the moon. And then you have the graveyard, similar. So with a little bit of front lighting, you can light up the graveyard, and then a minimal backlighting throughout the, the back of the tunnel and maybe a fog machine uh, to give a more the creepy effect. That's how I envisioned that. Now, on to the scale model, which I will not lie, has been difficult. This is number 15, and Hopefully it works out well. Um, built everything to scale, um, to actual scale. So walk through once again, um, main platforms, center stage, the two side platforms that come out, the main tunnel in the back with the stone done in chalk, um, the moon slash boulder in the background done with like chalk get closer you can see it better and have Sisyphus outlined in like the chalkish feature so it gives that chalkboard feel every set piece that I worked with um, for this show would be the same um, for instance the bed simply created but done with chalk so the bed would go on that platform um, got a little armoire with some clothes in it to go on this side um, that way it would be like a dresser but with done with like the chalk art so Miss Zero would be like on that side and then Mr. Zero laying across the bed 
and then seam two, and these were very difficult to make. His desk, and forgive my large hands. Yeah, it's upside down. And her desk. So we can get feel for the actual size of the pieces in the in the set itself. So his desk would be at top and her desk would be at the bottom. Kind of also gives the feeling like he's talking down to her because he feels superior in his position. And then scene three in the house, like I said, the, the people would be lined up on the side to give the feeling. The police would be back inside the tunnel and Mr. Zero would be downstage. And then for the court scene, I have the jurors boxes. Everything is done in the chalkboard style of art to carry the aesthetic throughout. Doesn't want to stand up. Come on. So Mr. Mr. Zero, you know, on one platform, and then all the jurors standing up behind the other, and so that's for the court scene. And then we go to the graveyard scene. And that gives the actors more room downstage uh, to act out in front of the graveyard. Maybe some of the, the, the gentleman that wakes up and you start yelling at him could pop up from behind it. But it would really, really be interesting with backlight coming out and then like fog machine kind of creeping out around the graveyard give that eerie effect. And then if we go back to the Elysium Fields, even the tree would be done chalkboard style. Instead of just one elaborate tree coming up, and then in the background have the psych come down and the lights hitting it to, to give like a splash, or like give the feel and the look of like the Aurora Borealis is how I envision it. And the thing that I like the most about using the chalkboard style is any front light or top light that I hit the chalkboard art with the white on black it will cause that white to absorb the color and I mean it'll it'll be beautiful and then in the very end we switch out final scene back to Mr. Zero's desk with the adding machine on it and then like like I said he comes down the stairs he has plenty of room acting it out and then the end result through the tunnel but I did not leave the chalk lines on the stage by mistake. It was fully intentional because I want to give the feel that this is a chalkboard, like everything. The entire set is basically like a chalkboard feel. It takes away the color. It gives a, a depressing and oppressive feel for the entire show. And as I mentioned, the only splashes of color would be like moments of joy or happiness. Like for instance, say the scene where he's in his office and she's downstage. Then maybe we could see a small splash of color slowly come across uh, the boulder in the back. Because I mean, he, he, he is, he might not realize it yet, but he, he does find joy with her. It's falling. And the scenes with the Elysium fields would be the largest amount of color. Um, and that is my uh, set design and my rendering and my draftings uh, for my idea for the project. I apologize if I say um a lot. It has been a long day and I'm designing another show that I work here for. But uh, I just I, I chose this one scene because to me it expresses the most. You have absence of color, you have the graveyard scene, but what intrigued me is the way that I figured about taking the boulder, I mean, because you have Sisyphus pushing the boulder up the hill, but if I choose the chalkboard style, it can double as a moon in separate scenes. And the same thing with the stones around, um, it would be able to show up the color for those moments, especially the blue. Um, if I move this light around a little bit, see if I take it away, it lights up when it's dark. If I bring the light in, it picks up more. And 
and blue lights are, are mostly what I'm looking at for um, because they, they automatically give the mind that depressive feel for most people. And that is my presentation. Thank you very much for watching it.